Welcome to Lost Without Japan, a travel podcast about the life changing experiences of exploring Japan and those moments we would be lost without. For your listening pleasure, allow me to introduce your very own Kanko Gaido, Michael. Welcome to this week's episode of Lost Without Japan, a podcast based on Japan and your Lost Without Moments. This is your director of travel for TKIC Studio Productions coming to you with positive thoughts and excitement for your next journey to Japan and his own return next summer. I'd like to thank you for giving me a bit of your time today, and I truly hope this podcast finds you in a good place or on the path to a better one no matter how it may seem at this moment, my belief is that we could all use a beacon like this in our lives to help guide us during these times, and my hope is that Japan, along with this show, will become that for you. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're a returning Lost Without listener, thank you again for your time and returning once more. As always, the advertising I include with my show is done for free is to help continue to promote the friends of the shows that we've interviewed in the past. And I must say that I'm definitely thinking about Japan today as it is negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry for listeners that are in Celsius. It is freezing. (laughs) I have my heat off so that it does not appear in the recording. And I also have a broken crown at the moment, which makes speaking so much more interesting. But I love talking about Japan. I love the fact that you come to listen and really don't want to miss an episode as a result of all of this. So we're going we're gonna to go today and just know this is going to be, I think, an episode that is worth me going through all of the you know, trials and tribulations that are going on right now to get it to you. I do want to take a moment before we get too far in today's episode, which may be a little bit longer than normal. Kudos to you, extra bonus material. There was just so much in the city we're going to cover today to do so. But before that, I really want to give as much of a chance as possible for listeners of the show to be part of our three-year celebration, which will be taking place next summer. For that reason, I'm going to start requesting audio recording or written stories to be included with that episode coming from you. They can be about your favorite story from a past Japan trip. It could be, for those of you that haven't been, what you're looking forward to most for that first special experience. It can also be just what you've enjoyed about our show over this time. So please email an audio file if you'd like to hear your voice on the air or the written word in that place. I will read it for you and send that to lostwithoutjapan at gmail.com. I truly look forward to celebrating this special event with you, and I can't wait to read or hear what you end up choosing to share with the show. You can't send it too early, my friends. I'm going to put it into a folder and hold on to it. So feel free to send at any time that works for you. As our group departs today, please remember to double check you have all of your luggage, passports, and phones with you before our group departs. You've made it. Today is the day you continue your journey throughout Japan. So go ahead and take a few deep breaths. And come along with your tour group as we make sure your journey today is as wonderful as possible, whether it's the first trip or a return one to this awe-inspiring country. As always, when you end up looking to make a reservation for lodging, make sure that you book what you book is fully refundable. And you know that the dates necessary to get you the money back are there and ready for you so that you don't miss that date. I know for some Airbnb, they'll give you a cutoff point. So just make sure not to miss that. And remember, you can always reach out to the show at lostwithoutjapan at gmail.com or lostwithoutjapan on Instagram. If I can answer any questions or be of any assistance during your journey or before you leave, feel free to reach out anytime. 
As always, today's timestamp and our show notes will take you directly to our talk on our location of the city of Takamatsu, which is in the Kagawa prefecture on the island of Shikoku. The show's Google document with resources and information on Japan, as well as links to past episodes, can also be found in today's show's notes. Before we get into the history of Takamatsu, though, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Road Bike Rental Japan, where they provide cycling solutions to those wishing to go cycling or bike touring in Japan. With nationwide delivery options available, you can explore even more of Japan on two wheels and at your own pace. More details for all of you and what RBRJ services can be found at roadbikerentaljapan.com. Let's go on to today's talk by discussing a bit about the city of Takamatsu and what the area has to offer for you and kick off our first ever route of Japan that will cover three to four locations within Shikoku and its surrounding areas, allowing you to turn what has normally been a day trip for us into, you know, maybe a nice four day or week long exploration of the area. The city of Takamatsu is a port city that is the capital of Kagawa, Japan's smallest prefecture. It has a population of around 420,748 and used to be the main entry point to Shikoku Island until the opening of the Seto Ohashi Bridge in 1988. This is great news, though, for listeners like myself that may suffer from motion sickness and, you know, no boats or ferries are needed for you to come visit this great city. Now, this doesn't mean you can't take advantage of the multiple ferries throughout to explore the area and the minor islands that are nearby that offer just endless opportunities that await you both on this island and the ones that you can get to. The history of this town stems from relatives of the Togoa shogun, the Matsudari clan, as a castle town that was part of what was then called the Sanuku province during the Edo period. What is constructed during that time can still be found and be there for visiting pleasure even today. That area is also known for a culinary delight for my fans of udon, with their signature dish being sanaki udon, but also being known for yama motoya and hanamaru udon. And for those of you that enjoy fish, they are also known for ichikari ku, a type of fish cake. Sanaki udon is so popular in the area that you can even at times find flavored ice cream of it as well. Sanuki udon can be identified by its firm, chewy texture that comes from a specific type of wheat that has traditionally been grown in that prefecture. But kind of the funny part about it now, though, is the wheat is primarily sourced from Australia. For my Australian listeners, rejoice. Udon is extremely popular in the Kagawa prefecture. As you can see, it even describes itself as an udon prefecture with over 700 Sanuki Udon restaurants across the, this prefecture alone. One festival of note in the area is the Haoigi Matsuri, which will be held around the 8th of September in 2024 and is usually the second Sunday of the month for which the festival is held. The festival has a long history for the area as participants called Supomi can be identified by their vibrant makeup, their don costumes, and a festival that really takes on a humorous and very energetic atmosphere. For those of you looking to join our tour group in Takamatsu today, I will cover some ways for you to join us from Tokyo as well as from our last destination. We talked about the Minami Alps. Now, by car, it's around 7 hours and 45 minutes from Tokyo. Because of this, I would really recommend stopping in Osaka or Nagoya or just anywhere in between, my friends. And you don't have to lose then an entire day to just driving. It's your vacation. Do what you want to. But at the same time, don't stress yourself out. If you choose to do so, it gives you the choice of enjoying the day in one of the cities prior that I've mentioned. 
or doing the rest of your drive the following day after doing so. If you were coming from the Minami Alps, that is really not that much of a difference from leaving by Tokyo by car. It's about an hour less of travel time at 6 hours and 45 minutes. Traveling by trains, bus, or plane, however, would be a much longer trip than if you just came directly from Tokyo. Departing from Tokyo by plane, from Haneda, and from Tokyo Station should result in getting you to our location quicker than by driving. But unless you're adding on or looking to stop in Okinawa, be careful of the route that you choose, as some of the flights have a huge cost difference. All other Options we discussed, however, will, will result in longer travel times. So please be sure to utilize the Tokubos website link that I will provide in today's show notes if you'd like to do the bus route. And just make sure to just check everything that you need to with that and make sure that you are doing everything you need to to make that trip as short as possible as there will be multiple stops along the way. There are limited buses leaving this location, so it's important for you to know which one is the correct one just so you're not wasting unnecessary time um, waiting for a bus once you leave this city. So just be aware uh, from Takamatsu, less options to Takamatsu, uh, more. After doing so, you can also even take the option of a night bus where you sleep on that bus. It's around a 12 hour trip uh, which can be uh, close to 11 as well regular buses just run you around 50 to 90 dollars a for that trip with night buses being around 70 to 120 dollars night buses depart from tokyo station yeso south exit at two different times for a nine hour trip to kobe and a two hour 45 minute trip to takamatsu from there now that we have transportation out of the way, it's time to get into our day trip for today. One thing of note for this location is that there are ferry services you can choose to utilize during your trip. And we'll be talking about how to do that and some of the things, uh, amazing activities and trips that you can do from that in our next episode. But Because we're going to be dividing it, I said, uh, into today, which is Central Takamatsu and add on some additional recommendations uh, for that area as well. Now, with that out of the way, let's look into lodging for today with the Hanjuku Kai, a four-star Ryokin, with prices ranging from $154 directly through their site for the middle of February, which I will include in the show notes for today, or from other Dates that I was looking for uh, or sites could range from $138 to $195, depending on which site you use. Depending on your room, you can end up with some amazing views of the Seto Island Sea, as well as understand what Ome Teneashi, wholeheartedly looking after your guest, truly means after your stay. Beyond the view of the sea, you will also be able to enjoy a great view of the city at night, as well as some amazing views of both sunrise and sunset. With those views coming at a price of admission, which is pretty steep, hike up a trail just to be able to get to the location. So I truly recommend that you don't just get off and walk your way up that way. Take advantage of a taxi on that last leg of the trip especially if you're coming by bus or by train. Being that we are going to take advantage of Ritzuring Gardens during our stay, this is why I kind of chose the lodging that we had for today as it's centered on that location. But this could easily change for you depending on the focus of your stay. There is public transportation from Ritzuring Garden by either train or by bus, but both will require additional walking on your part with the bus allowing for the least amount of walking on your part and making sure that you don't end up going through a different route that could add easily another 10 minutes of unnecessary walking to your trip. It's a 10 minute walk from the garden to our bus stop that I've ended up uh, bookmarking in Google as well. And the Sahaho 
G Shita or Sahaho G Temple bus stop. All of that for just 270 yen, uh, six minutes, a five bus stop. And then from there, a Kozai line that will end up resulting in you having another 10 minute walk uh, to our lodging. Like I said, a lot of um, you know buses and stops to get there. It is not central. Um, our later recommendation will be more central and require less transfers for you. Now, I would fully recommend grabbing, like I said, uh, that taxi, if you are, especially with luggage, or if you are leaving uh, that location as well, especially if it is hot, raining, just anything, don't make the end of your trip to this spot or the beginning of it any less fun than it, it could end up being. If you're coming from Takamatsu Station, there's apparently a shuttle that will take you from that station directly to that location. But that being said, that option does not come up in Google Maps and will be something you'd have to discuss directly with the Ryokan, which may require some ability to speak Japanese to be able to accomplish. If that's not an option for you, it'll be around 1,600 yen from the station by taxi per person, which really, at the end of the day, is not a bad price at all. The, the steepness of the hill even impacts those of you that are driving to this location so please exercise extra caution on your way up or down. One great result of driving is that this, the city center is only a 10-minute drive from this location. You can choose to have a private dining experience at our lodging for today, which would result in a multi-course meal that almost seems like a crime to eat. Make sure to take a picture or two so you can remember that experience after you're home. Some of the rooms do have access to open air baths, which is still something I'd like to experience in Japan. The top floor of our lodging has a public bath that has, again, we're going to see a theme for today, another great, amazing view. One thing to note about this spot, though, is that the main way to access all of this is by stairs. So there's no elevator and just a wheelchair escalator that might be uncomfortable for some to end up using. One last note about our lodging is that there is simply a breathtaking view available to you from the roof as well. So don't miss that opportunity to take in all that your lodging has to offer. It is much more than just drop our luggage in a place to crash at night. There's not really option of food though in the immediate area for this lodging so i've added Showokocho train station to our google maps as a reference point to the family mart which is the most convenient convenient store for our location and has an atm that's available 24 hours a day which might very well come in handy during your stay they also have a large parking lot for those of you that are with car and I would very much recommend stocking up on snacks and water for not only our adventure ahead, but also for your stay. For those of you that prefer coffee to start the day, I'll start with the closest recommendation that I have before telling you about what's caught my eye and, you know, a good deal away from our lodging. But if you want to use your car to find yourself in the area, it'd be worth a quick stop to visit this location. The closest place I'm recommending is actually inside a magazine store. It is Tutsutu Ya Saiho that opens around 9 a.m. and closes around 10 p.m. I have bookmarked this location as well as the coffee shop inside it in our Google Maps. Within that is the place that I'm talking to for coffee, which is Tuli's Coffee, and looks to be busiest around noon to 4 p.m., with its busiest day being Sundays. The shop says it is open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., but to be safe, I would recommend not looking for coffee after 8 p.m. Besides, this being a Pokemon Go stop, they will also accept credit card, cash, and a lot of Japanese-based payments, such as PayPay. They have a wide variety of hot and cold drinks with their Uji Matcha Latte at 485 yen for a short, 545 yen for a tall or 605 yen for a grande that really caught my eye. The Izumu Ginger Honey Lemonade Tea available hot or cold at 495 yen for a short 
or 555 yen for a tall looks like a great choice as well. And if you're looking for a plain black cup of coffee, you can do that. Just know that it rotates daily. So you may find something you like and have it be different the following day. For those of you wanting to cool off, the chocolate iced frap drink is available for 630 yen for a short and 690 yen for a tall. Looks like a great way to cool down. I have included the shop's menu available on their website with today's notes so that you can look ahead and see what this location offers. This location is just a four minute drive or a cab ride away, or at least a 15 minute fortunately downhill walk away. The other shop I'd recommend is Cometa's Coffee and really is only an option by car or taxi as it is a 12 minute drive because public transportation isn't an option with this one either as it looked like there were a bunch of stops and it ending up taking this 12 minute drive and making it an hour trip at times or a 50 minute walk by foot. So this location though, if you're able to make it, is open from 7 a.m. with it being busy from the word go and really until it closes at 6 p.m. So depending on your luck, you can expect to see a queue of a quite a line after arriving. Good news is uh, everyone says that that queue goes pretty quickly. Breakfast service ends around 10.30 or 11 a.m. There's no smoking at this location, unlike others I've seen with an ashtray located outside instead as the only option for you to smoke, which is a plus for me at least, uh, may not be for you. Um, The desserts, large sandwiches, bakery items, among others, truly look like they'd be easily enjoyed by anyone in what looks to be a great atmosphere with also free Wi-Fi. A word of advice for those shaved ice, though, is that even if you order a small, it looks to be incredibly large. One thing that really caught my eye about this location, despite it being a chain, is that the customer service at this location is constantly being pointed out. And it says something for a country like Japan. I will include the menu of their website today in the notes. Just take note, you need to put the location we are discussing to get a more accurate menu and pricing for your journey. Lunch plates with sandwiches such as ham, potato salad, and thick sliced pizza toast, to name a few, are available from 11.30 to around 2 or just when they're sold out. Breakfast choices range from thick toast to a roll with egg or red bean paste with jam, butter, or soy milk spread across your toast. It is truly a lot of food for just 580 yen or 660 yen to, that translates to around $5 US. They do have a pretty cute children's menu as well for those of you that are traveling with your family that works, I think, for even the most discerning palate. Once we are fully caffeinated, we are off for our first big stop of the day at Ritsurin Garden, which could easily just be half of your day by itself. From tea to udon and souvenirs, there's a variety of little shops on top of this sprawling garden that even offers 30 minutes wooden boat rides as well. There is a public parking, but the lot is incredibly small, so you may want to to utilize a taxi or public transportation. Parking is 100 yen for 25 minutes with Admission just being 410 yen for adults and features both a Japanese and Western style garden for your enjoyment. The nice thing too is the trees reach ages of more than 300 years old. If you're looking to the boat ride, it may be wise to head there kind of when you arrive earlier in the day to avoid the longer waits that can occur. One nice thing is that there are quite a few bathrooms throughout and some gorgeous koi to look at as well. Overall, though, the great thing about visiting Takamatsu is that it's not a heavily visited spot for tourists outside of cherry blossom season. So make sure you have sunblock and batteries for your camera and your phone just charged, ready to go. Avoid those weekends, try to avoid holidays and just have an amazing experience. If you do speak Japanese, there are guides available as well, but not in English. According to the locals, the south entrance of this spot is the recommended starting point, 
And despite the nonstop snacks that are available, we are going to look for something to eat before we continue our day. Five minutes south from the east side of the garden is Sonoku Udon Yuhaira. This location offers cafeteria style stops where you can add broth and your own toppings to your udon or tempura. What can make this especially tasty is that you go down the line choosing whatever you want. There's no English menu, but don't let it hold you back as you can point and gesture to what you want. Udon may be served cold, but you can warm them up using the warm water in the middle of the restaurant or even at your table where you basically take your noodles, you put them into a small strainer and you put them into that hot water to kind of like soak in your own little private spot. But remember, don't do it too long. You're really only looking to warm them up. They're already cooked. One word to the wise though is the water is extremely hot. So be careful not to splash any on yourself. And for anyone that has allergy to shellfish or other things, um, might be a spot to avoid unless you know for sure what you're getting. Parking is free, but extremely limited. So I would recommend leaving your car if you do find parking at the garden and get it after you're done eating and walking about. All of this is located near lodging that we'll talk about later on in the day. One word of the wise, though, is if that you don't want to go later in the day as the tempura and the toppings can run out. So to ensure the most variety arrive earlier, even if you see a wait again, it's mentioned that the turnaround is very quick. I've included the website as they have monthly newsletters that you can look at and you can even look at their hours that they're open. The the shop can vary if there is a holiday, but for most part, they are 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. every day except Sunday. Please, though, be aware that many places in Japan stop serving at least 30 minutes prior to close. You will need cash for this establishment, though, as that is the only form of payment that is accepted. Pricing can vary as well as the toppings that are offered but I would expect to spend around 1,000 to 2,000 yen per person for your meal, but bring some extra money is never a bad idea. You could for sure hop a ferry to adventure, as I've said, to those numerous islands around, but we're gonna wait uh, to do that, but we will get some adventure going involving some water. And that is going to be a great place to go to if it has rained recently, or it is, you know, starting to while you're there. And that will be the new um, Yashima Aquarium, where admission for high school students or older is 1,500 yen. Elementary through junior high is 700 yen. Three years of age till elementary school is 500 yen, with any younger being free. One nice thing is that you can look at the aquarium map ahead of time, but in order to do this, you'd have to have a second device to translate it with. So have it displayed on one and, you know, translate with the other. You can also expect dolphins, penguins, sea otters, turtles, and more during your visit. And one just thing that I would like to point, it's not the largest aquarium in the world, but you can help support an aquarium that has faced threat of closure before. With all the negative news that can occur or be seen by tourists, you could make a positive impression that carries with someone in place of the negative ones that may come out in the news. One great thing about this audience, though, that listens to this show is that I know we're responsible for a lot of positive things uh, from your visits, and that just makes my heart, you know, a couple sizes uh, larger knowing that's the case. One thing that repeats itself again and again is just how much warmth and positive energy the staff bring to what they do every day. The aquarium is on the top of a mountain and it may seem like an odd place for one, but it does provide you very close spots to go and find other amazing views as well. On weekends, they even allow for you to be able to feed some of the animals. One thing of note, is that some of the exhibits are small. And for some, that might be a reason to avoid supporting the aquarium altogether. 
That being said, just 11 months ago, they added to and expanded the Dolphin area, and with continued support by local government and visitors, my hope is that they'll be continue that process in the goal of that to keep expanding other exhibits as well and just you know provide a better environment. I have added the different observation areas available to you that are nearby as well. If you'd like some extra, you know, special views when you're up there, there are a variety of public transportation to get you to the garden spot, but it will require a few transfers and a bit of walking to do so. I have added the different observation decks available for this location in the show's Google Maps as well. Shikoku Village, which is the open air museum, is next location that we would be talking to you about on our journey today, and one that I'm super excited about sharing with you. One thing of note is the website I'll be sharing with you requires a VPN to show that you are in Japan to access all that it does. And this is not unique to uh, this site alone. It's come across many uh, for Japan. To get to this spot from our Udon location by public transport really pr- provides you with a few choices. One thing to take into account when choosing your route is that you may find that a shorter route by time may require you to do considerably more walking than others that are longer. So find the one that works best for you and your group. For today, I chose the route with the least amount of walking as our next adventure will result in a lot of it. And depending on how much you want to explore, it could be an 11 minute walk to Ritsuran Cohen Station. We will take a three minute one stop ride to Kawaramachi Station where we'll need to change lines of about 60 minutes ride to our Yashima station, where there's a seven minute walk to arrive finally at our destination of Shikoku Village. Admission for adults is 1600 yen. University students get a discount with ID of 1000 yen. And high school and junior age students are 600 yen. Elementary school age students and younger are free. I would recommend visiting this, the site ahead of time to scan the QR code and download the app for Apple or Google Play that provide you English audio guide for your stay, since the signs you're going to be coming across are in Japanese. One word of caution, though, is that if you go when it rains recently uh, while you're there or, you know, like I said, recently prior to that, the stone paths become extremely slippery. So take caution. Go slow. Um, hours are from 9.30 a.m. to 5, but entry stops 30 minutes before that closing time. There's also a PDF of upcoming calendar to see what the park is open or closed on your visit. But no, poor weather can end up making it close, uh, even if it says that it's supposed to be open. The site explains the area as being spread over a vast area of Mount Yashima in Kagawa Prefecture. The core of the village is the Shikoku. Mura Museum, an open air museum made up of 33 buildings relocated and restored from four prefectures of Shikoku. What have been relocated includes houses, worksheds, gathering places, playhouses, rice warehouses, soy sauce breweries, buildings from the Edo and Tesho periods, which are actually lived in, used by real people, not just recreations that you'd normally find elsewhere the pillars and beams of these houses, as well as many folk implements displayed there are imbued with the wisdom, the work, the prayers of the people that were part of them. And as you take a walk and enjoy the rich nature of whatever season that you're there, you can end up being soothed and relaxed by the sound of waterfalls and birds that are found in that area. And it's not often that you find buildings like this But add on a waterfall as well while you're at it. Come on, can't pass that up. Also, if you're up for some more walking, uh, there's also the Yashima Shinto Shrine nearby. It's super close and provides amazing views as well. One other great activity, if you just would like to be outside and enjoy some moderate level hiking, is the Yashima Trailhead Hiking Area. One other great activity, if you'd like to be outside and enjoy some moderate level 
difficulty of hiking in the is the Yashima Trailhead Hiking Area. One nice part about this hiking area is that there is a parking lot near the start of the trails, and it's recommended that you park as close to this area as possible. I would very much recommend the use of hiking socks, the appropriate boots for hiking shoes, and just make sure that you're not leaving with blisters at the end of your stay. Besides that, a fully charged phone with a power bank, snacks, lots of water, sun covering, and sunblock, and at least a small first aid kit if needed. There's a trail from Fukurai to the Ishima Castle Manzeki, but from what I see, it is an incredibly steep and tiring trail. So just stick to the regular mountain trails instead. If you explore the area around Nanare, you can even find the ruins of Yasha Cable Yamagami Station, which will also allow you to check out the Kangake observation deck in that area if you choose. One hike that seems to be a little flatter than others begins in Dake that heads north toward a separate observation deck called Yukaku Te, with the hike being around 2.2 kilometers or around 1.4 miles away. The trek there and back are both around 50 minutes or about two hours if you take the route back after enjoying the observation area. The perk of this path, however, as it is said to be mainly flat once you're there, allowing you to stroll at a more leisurely space. The view of this Seto Island Sea is said to be worth all of the hard work, though, but that truly depends on you and if you end up enjoying that type of activity to begin with. As always, it's never a bad idea to look for local guides if you head out more, deeper into these areas and no one wants to adventure alone get hurt, and be in trouble as a result of that. Plus, your trip is valuable, that time that you're there. So why not, you know, take advantage of that guide and make the most of your time and make sure the trails that you do go on are the best for you and provide the most, you know, relaxation, entertainment, great views, whatever it is for you. I don't know about you, but all this time walking is definitely time to get something to eat and relax and get back to our, you know, lodging later on today. In order to give you as many possibles for your experience for food and for shopping, we are going to head to Takamatsu Marugame Mache Shopping District. One word to the wise is that this is often seen as the busiest spot in all of Takamatsu. But if you can avoid weekends, that should help ease the crowding. One nice thing about the area is that they have trees and seats for resting. And let me tell you, if you've not been to Japan before, this is not a common experience within Japan. It's just so hard to find a place to sit. When you do sit, you can take advantage of the English PDF map that's available on their site that will be included in our show notes as well. And this area has coverings throughout, so even if it's raining, you will be covered. One word of advice, though, is that some restaurants close earlier than the time that the shops do. Um, there are some very high-end shops like Louis Vuitton and Tiffany. And last but not least, like our other areas talked about today, make sure you bring some comfortable shoes as this is a quite, uh, you, know, you know, so many different things to uh, take in. If you want a very local shopping experience on a smaller scale and you want to maybe escape the crowds of Takamatsu Shopping District, um, you can head directly to the Takamatsu Tamachi Shopping Street. Um, from secondhand clothing stores to small izakaya to udon stores that even have their info available on the area's website, which I will include in our show notes as well as. Udon Town Gourmet, the tab available for it on the site, just shows a variety of local and less upscale everyday shops. For me personally, even though they don't have seats or, you know, some of the things I talked about previously, this spot is the one that would probably be the most appealing to myself. Reviews mention it's not busy even on weekends. And for me, getting out on vacation and not be surrounded by a swarm of people 
can sometimes be a hard thing to do uh, when you're going out and about in Japan, especially if you're hitting a tourist uh, area. But finding something like this can be mentally great, uh, an escape and recharge that we can all use at different times while experiencing Japan. I'm not sure about you, but today's activity has me thinking real hard about getting a massage. Not that I don't think already that getting a massage while on vacation is a great way to relax, but the area that I'm going to talk about today and the location where I have has staff that speak some English, and that's kind of very uh, hit or miss in our area that we're in today. So this is a huge plus. And that location is Revere, which is a 20-minute walk from Ritsuran Garden, a 10-minute bus ride if you get the express, or 15 if you don't. You get off at the Shoku Chukin Mei or Shoku Chukin Bank bus stop. From there, it's just a three-minute walk, Location opens every day at 11 a.m. And it, fortunately for you, it is open extremely late. You have a full day of availability till 1 a.m. every day of the week, minus holidays. Last reception of guests will be before midnight. Prices really range for their offerings, with one that caught my eye being a 30 minute body massage and 30 minute foot massage for 5,940 yen. There's also a 90 minute option as well with added head massage and other things added to it uh, for your relaxation. One great thing about this location is you can have the ability to book through their site, which I've included in the show notes as well. If you use Google, you can make it in English. Prices vary though, like I said, and the site kind of your booking um, is all like coupon based. So the pricing and those coupon offerings, I'm sure change monthly. So just double check if you're looking in April and traveling in May. Um, one additional thing is that there's also a 7-Eleven that's 24 hours nearby as well. So if you haven't stocked up ahead of heading back to our lodging for tonight, you can do so before you leave. For those of you that haven't chosen to eat at the numerous restaurants in the shopping districts we covered earlier, there are Sushi Dokoro Itohan that is a great stop nearby, the massage shop, as well as a ton of chain restaurants and a donut shop that I'm going to be talking about as well. Although this is not a chain, you could... and expect to spend around 7,000 to 8,000 yen per person for your visit. But if you want to experience sushi in a very small setting with a chef in front of you, this is the spot for you. Now, there's no English menu, but the chef does know some limited English and apparently is learning Korean as well, at least to be able to tell you what you're eating. I mean, if you're going that much out of your way to accommodate you, you're going to have a great time. They are open from 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. every day except Sunday. But unless you luck out or it's late, you may find limited seats because there's not many to begin with. And I would really, really, really look to book if you can the night before or if you speak some sort of Japanese. um, Try to make a reservation by phone in advance before going there. Again, if you can't make this location, there are others that are nearby. The chef's friendly demeanor, his use of seasonal ingredients, as well as the quality of service and fish are repeated countless times in the reviews, though, so I certainly hope you can make it. I have changed things with today's episode and included some of the items that would normally go in our honorable mention section with the activity that it was nearby in today's talk. If you do enjoy this change or don't, or don't, uh, feel free to reach out and let me know. I don't know if this is going to be an ongoing change yet, but it did truly work with today's episode. Choosing lodging for the area truly depends on what you're targeting on your stay in Takamatsu. If you're looking for a more centrally located and affordable option than our first, you can't go wrong with Dormi in Takamatsu, Chiyokin Mei. In order to get here, you take the airport bus from Takamatsu Airport where you get off at Central Park Prefectural Office Station, where you're just a minute walk from there. If you get there from JR Takamatsu Station, it will be a 20-minute walk, but some of that can be 
spent shopping. And really, is that not so bad? Another plus of this location is the Family Mart is across the way from this hotel. You can enjoy free late night ramen. You can enjoy free ice cream from the freezer after you take advantage of their very affordable onsen as well. There's also four small laundry machines as well where the wash is free, but the dryer is 100 yen for each 20 minutes that you need. Um, again, laundry soap you need to provide on your own. Um, rooms are, for the, are going to be small, um, but guests mentioned that if you get a king size bed that it is a little larger of a room. You can book directly through the site, and even though they have a few different languages, which is nice uh, to be able to do so, I'll make sure to include in our show notes uh, this website as well. Prices do range, so make sure to check more than one travel site against what you're doing when you go to book. Pricing really ranged uh, for me in US from $100 a night to 80, just depending on dates and when I was checking. But for all of you, uh, that are visiting this area. If you want something central, this is truly a great deal. Last but not least is Lathical Donuts. It's the last recommendation for today's episode with donuts ranging from around 400 yen each. The ones filled with cream get endless praise and simply look delicious. They are not cooked with oil and seem to just be extremely light and fluffy with the creme brulee donut really catching my eye. They're open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, but if they sell out, could close early. If you're looking through photos and find one in those Google sections that really catch your eye, uh, be best to head early. And, you know, maybe when you're visiting, find a limited seasonal offering as well. Please give a follow, like, and comment on your favorite streaming service. For updates on the show, feel free to give a follow on Instagram at Lost Without Japan. If you've enjoyed today's show, feel free to support the show by joining our Patreon. Links for that will be in today's show notes. Thanks to you members who have already donated. You're helping save towards the microphone that I'm looking to use to record various sounds on our next trip and add some on site interviews as well. Nihangu Jobs, powered by Kasha at Ikigai Connections. If your dream is to build a career around your Japanese and English language and or cultural skills, check out ikigaiconnections.com for country-specific resources and inspiring senpai success stories. If you're looking specifically for Japanese jobs in the U.S., search all for that at nihangojobs.com. For our song of the show, to take us out today, we're going to be going with, you know, a very classy one. And that, with some instrumental music from Asako Morikawa, who was born in Takamatsu, in their performance of Downland Simper, Downland Simper, Dolns, from their own YouTube channel, will be the one that does that for us. Looks like we're ready to call it a night before we begin our next adventure as we continue our discussion and exploration of Japan. On behalf of Lost Without Japan and the entire crew, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip. And we're looking forward to seeing you on board again in two weeks for our next episode where we are going to have a great interview set forth with you before uh, two weeks after that, coming back to this area and seeing what all the islands in this area have to offer you. To everyone out there, oh ginky day, stay well, my friends. <laughs>